the Iglesias deal just right there at the deadline? Oh, yeah. That's why I was late. So I had to go tell Chavez, which was not easy. Um, but, yeah, it, was, uh, it came together very late. You know, we've had interest in him. We talked about him as a free agent. Um, and it just sometimes these things happen late. Um, but, you know, these are some of the things we talked about. Um, you know, part of getting Austin's extension with knowing we were going to get it done or not, we had a lot of deals um, that we were exploring that had commitments in out years and would impact us going forward. And um, having clarity and understanding of where we were going to commit our, our dollars, I mean, we only can, you know, we're, we're obviously we're, we're going to be as competitive as we can year in and year out. Our payroll's growing year in and year out, but we still have to be smart about putting a winning club on the field. So um, making sure that we prioritize certain guys and make sure we had commitments that allows us to explore other trades, and we had a lot of things in, in the works, and um, Iglesias is someone we had our eye on, and it came together really late, like two minutes to go. I haven't even had a chance to talk to him, so. Alex, uh, now that the deadline's passed, did you complete everything you had hoped to? You know, you... Um, you just go in knowing it's an opportunity. You have 29 engaged GMs, and you know that it's an opportunity to do short-term, long-term. You know, in the off-season, um, there's just a lot going on, right? There's free agency. There's trades. So this is the one time that you have an exclusive audience and a captive audience in GMs and trades. Um, and a lot of things are bandied about. You saw players with years of control left, players that are going to be free agents. So um, this, has, this deadline had a lot of implications on our payroll going forward. So um, we had – and we knew – the last few days, um, at least for sure, that there was things. There were a lot of things on the table for us to explore. So, we explored uh, the last, I'd say, five six days, a lot of different things that had long term implications. Um, now, doing Austin's deal took some of those things off the table entirely. So, um, but we were happy to sign him, and it gave us direction. You guys could just wait one minute. We're just going to let Austin's wife. Uh... Yeah. You don't want to hear this stuff? It's great. <laughs> I, I thought I was good. Wow. <laughs> Right. So when you woke up yesterday, you didn't know Austin's deal would be done? Yesterday, well, we announced it last night, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it got done. It got done. That I mean, we, you never, until it's done, it's not done, right? So, no, we got it, I think it was announced around 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock last night. So was it last night? Honestly, the day's trade deadline, I'm not, it's a blur. It's, uh, I, I think it was last night or two days early, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it, it was done. It was few hours after it was it was announced I mean so as you're making the going through discussions yesterday you know you're saying well I maybe I can do this long term but it hinges on this and yes at what point absolutely. in time did you just say okay this is the deal we've got to do um, I mean that was we needed to have you know we needed to in our minds with just the things obviously my responsibility is head of baseball operations to put the best team out on the field and make the best deals that we can and take advantage of the windows we have right now. So, uh, but also at the same time, you're trying to manage the long term and uh, keep a core together. So um, you have to just balance it, right? So at some point it makes sense and at other points it doesn't. So we did a deal this organization has never come close to doing. Um, we extended farther. I've never done a deal like this as a GM. I've never come close to this many years or, or dollars. I know certainly Terry McGurk's been here a long time with a lot of great players. He's never signed off on something like this uh, in the past, but he certainly did here. And um, we're excited about it. Yep. Justin? Yeah, I've got one more before Schultz punches me in the face. Um, <laughs> um, what's, what's this like for you, the two days or three days leading up to the deadline? How have you learned in your career to balance Everything in the air, the stress, getting sleep, all of that. Uh, have your family not be in town. Seriously. Uh, I learned that in 2015 in Toronto. My family went to Europe, and it was my best trade deadline that I had. And um, we kind of have that set up as a family. So last year as well, they were back in Canada, and they were back for a few days here, and then they went back to Canada again for a week. So um, just with experience, I think you learn, you know, you you know who you can work with and who you can't work with, and time is important, and making sure you don't waste time, and you don't have time to explore. You have to make quick decisions and move, and uh, that's just based on my experiences. So um, you really don't have time to just drag things out because just things are moving fast, and people are making decisions, and you can miss opportunities in the windows quickly, uh, you know, hour by hour, just because there's 29 other clubs that are doing the same thing. Jeff? Alex, in addition to economic ramifications of other potential deals that you didn't do, it, it's well known you didn't have a deep well of prospects like you've had in the past, whatever. How much, if at all, did that sort of hamstring you, or would it have made a difference? Would you ever, this year, taking this team right now, 
Would your approach to the deadline have been any different if you had yeah, so more I, toys? Yeah, I, so I very respectfully, I don't agree. But I understand, look, from a, uh, a publication standpoint and so on in terms of prospect rankings and so on, um, I don't think Strider was in the top 100 prospects. I think Harris got in late. Uh, Von Grissom, you know, now I won't say the cat's out of the bag, but he just got added to top 100. We loved him a year ago. Um, we loved the fact that he was not out there. You know, we love the fact that he wasn't. So uh, we don't, uh, maybe to a fault, uh, overly promote certain guys, and we just let them do their work. But um, we have not had a moment where we've, at this moment yet, I'm sure there will be a day, uh, that we've explored a, trading for a player, and someone told us we don't have the players to give back. And um, now, there's certain players we're just not going to be, we're going to be active on, you know, because of we have certain spots committed and so on. But... Um, that's never been an issue for us. I mean, we really like our players. Look, you always want to be better. You always want to get more talent. But um, we love the group that we have, um, and we think we have a lot of young prospects that we're excited about but may not be as highly ranked. But we have guys on the field right now that weren't highly ranked that are great players. I think Ry Riley's an, a, a great example. He wasn't ranked highly as well. So um, that's the way we prefer to have it. Quick follow-up to that. So obviously – there's been some deals around the majors this year that have gotten a lot of attention, particularly, obviously, with the Padres. Sure. Where I, I know you don't pay attention to perceptions at all in terms of, wow, now the Padres are this, or now, you know, the Mets, Dodgers are this, whatever. But do you have any thoughts, given what you guys did last year? Because there weren't a lot of necessarily a lot of wows after the deadline last year, even right. though you made that flurry of trades, in terms of what you guys have now and perceptions of other teams. Right yeah, now. I look, as a young GM, I made mistakes with that. Not that I chased it, but I've been part of winning the offseason, making the splashy moves. And I don't believe at the time we did it for those reasons, but we were the kings of Las Vegas and great best deadline winners and so on. It didn't result in anything. So um, I don't get caught up in it. Look, I think it's exciting as a fan. Um, I love it too, following who's going where, who's getting traded and so on. But um, we just don't, uh, we don't worry about it. We just do what we feel is best for the club. I remember as a young GM when the Boston Red Sox got Carl Crawford and Adrian Gonzalez, we were in the AL East, and it was like, oh, my Lord, they're going to be unbelievable. Or even last year, you know, Max Scherzer, Trey Turner, those are unbelievable players. It doesn't guarantee anything. That's not to take anything away from those clubs. So um, I've just I've, – I've been there. I've done that. It hasn't always worked. I think you need to be a good club. You need to worry about yourself. Um, but I think it's exciting for the game when there's big deals like this. Grant. Alex, kind of piggybacking on that, I'm just kind of curious to hear you maybe compare what you were going through last year as you were trying to make moves to elevate the club. And then this year, you have a club that's over 20 games, over 500, but you're still out there adding pieces. What was this experience like for you uh, compared to last year? I, it wasn't. It was wasn't the same. Um, look, obviously, last year we had. I mean, it's well documented. We had cut payroll from 20 to 21. Uh, fan base, pandemic, attendance came back. You know, we had over $10 million to work with at the trade deadline. That opened up a world of possibilities that came available at the All-Star break. So um, that, and we had a lot of holes because in cutting payroll, we lost a lot of our depth. So it came, it was an issue. Um, and we had a lot of holes and we had a lot of things to address. So like you said, we're a much um, more well-rounded club at this point. Um, you can always get better. We don't have as many pr pronounced needs that we did a year ago. Uh, but you still know you have a window of opportunity to get better in the short and the long term because at this moment you have, like I said, you have 29 engaged GMs, or 30 including us, obviously. And that doesn't always happen. So you, you feel like every deadline you should take advantage. Whether you're selling, buying, you have a chance to really impact your club short and long term. Gabe? Yeah, Alex, you obviously have a close relationship with Perry. How long, you know, had you really been talking to him about Iglesias and, you know, being – you know, being, having the relationship you have with him, how does that kind of help push something like that over the finish line? Yeah, I mean, you know, but I have a relationship with L.A. Dodgers GM and San, and San Francisco Giants GM, and that's not taking anything from Perry, but, you know, you have relationships, but now you're competing, right? And his responsibilities to his club, my responsibilities to my club, and you separate it. So um, I actually think sometimes it's harder because you know each other's style, and um, it's just – you know, and, you're, and there's also a part of you want to make sure you're being fair to both sides and, and so on. So I think in this one, um, we were able, because it was so last minute and quick, obviously we had interest in Iglesias, but um, the ability to find, to find ground, we were working on some other things. They fell apart. Uh, we'd always liked Iglesias, but again, um, we were only going to make so many financial commitments, right? We weren't going to be 10 different scenarios. We weren't going to do all, all 10. So once we start allocating certain slots, it eliminates others from a financial standpoint going forward. So um, it helped, but 
uh, again, it was it was very last minute that I was worried it wasn't going to go through. Mark, Alex, what was the rush like last night to you get Riley done? You Odor Easy, Grossman. Well, I mean, you know, just kind of get take us through those hours, and then you know that feeling at the end of the day, the satisfaction of doing all accomplishing all that in one day. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't um, I wouldn't use the word satisfaction. Not to you know it, because you just don't know how it's going to turn out, right? So you you think it, you feel good about, and then you don't. Guys still have to go out and play and perform, and you're still playing games and health. And I think the one thing I talk about it with my staff a lot is, you know, people seem to think this is the end of the season. Like, oh, it's we're right around the corner, a few weeks away, and you're ready for postseason. There's a lot of games left. A lot can happen. If you look back at the standings, took us take take us out of it. Just a bunch of other teams. Um, where they were at the trade deadline last year and where some of them they did end up at, at the end teams well over 500 that ended up below um, It's not that I'm not glass half full I just my job is to worry and my job is to always keep five steps ahead and make sure that we're we have depth and we're covered and things like that So the satisfaction piece is if you get to the postseason, you know, and that's when you're like, okay We finally a accomplished our first goal. So as you're going through it, you're on adrenaline. You're not thinking about it um, You know what you're anxious so you don't sleep uh, because you have so many things headed, and um, every trade deadline is the same. It's the days really blend together, and you're just glad when it's over. Any last ones? 